Pick 10 is when the community decides what champion you play. I'm pretty sure they picked Vayne for me. Yeah, they voted uh, me to play Anivia, so it's going to be a fun matchup against Zed. I'll say I have a slight advantage. I'm fairly happy with the choices. I haven't really played Zed lately, but then again, it's a fun champion to play and watch, so I understand why the fans would pick it. Yeah, I'm really excited to be here. I'm always excited to play in front of an international stage because that's when I put my best. Like, even if I'm not playing that great in the regular season, then I always step up in front of an international crowd. I'm not sure how it's gonna turn out, but hopefully it will be fun. Welcome back to the All-Star Pirates event and our first match of the day is Team Ice versus Team Fire in the Pick 10 game mode. Okay, uh, before we do get into this mode though, you know, Monty's got to have a segment on the analyst desk. I'm sad I didn't get to be on the analyst desk this year, but I do have a rebuttal. I'm so happy, Monty, and thank you for your English lesson here, and I agree that language, spoken language, is an inherently flawed way of communicating ideas. It's always open to interpretation. Uh, Jad has been so kind as to open dictionary.com for me here, and under the number one definition um, of rotations, it is the act of rotating, turning around, and axis. And as you know, Monty, as the ceremonial master of rotations, the Earth is currently rotating around its axis from west to east. Not to mention the m literal map movements of tectonic plates. Um, all right. I am actually currently <laughs> rotating right now with no effort at all. Congratulations. So that's just how easy rotations are. Yeah, well, <laughs> now that we're through with the rotation lesson, it's time to remind the fans how Pick 10 works. So they voted on the champions for each team, then the players get to decide amongst themselves who's going to play which champion. So for Team Ice, they'll be playing Thresh, Vayne, Anivia, Lucian, and Lee Sin. And for Team Fire, you picked Thresh, Ezreal, Zed, Lucian, and Lee Sin. Well, let's get on with it. Let's check out the starting lineups. On the blue side is Team Ice. They are, of course, from the European LCS Alliance. It's Froggen. We have then CLG's double lift from the North American LCS. Korea's Mad Life from CJ Enters Frost. Cool from ONG, uh, from OMG in League of Legends Pro League in China. And finally, we have Archie from Southeast Asia. Saigon Jokers in the Garena Premier League. And on the red side is Team Fire, captained by Gambit and Europe's Diamond. Bjergsen is also from North America on Team Solo Mid. Obviously, the crowd is behind all these guys. Shy from CJ Antis Frost, Team WE's Wei Xiao, and of course, from Southeast Asia, it's QTV from the Saigon Jokers. So we've got a different pick and ban pre-game talk yeah. here because we've kind of already got them. Pick 10 kind of does what it says on the tin. You guys pick the champions that they're going to be playing. Where's the focus going to lie in this one? Yeah, I have a feeling... Well, the question is going to be, is Doublelift going to play Vayne in the bottom lane against Lucian? which if he did, they'd have to move Lucian to a solo lane. Then the question is, is Lucian going to solo against Ezreal or Zed? And is Froggen going to want to play against Zed on Anivia? There's, those are the main questions So here. I'd say he probably does not want to play Anivia versus Zed. That's a pretty no bad matchup for Anivia. And you know, it's not his fault that he was voted into that situation. But we'll see what can they do to rectify this situation. That's what it's all about. League of yeah. Legends is all about adapting to the situation. Can they actually adapt to these matchups? Yeah, he said that in the pregame video, you know, guys, thanks for choosing Nivy. It's going to be a fun matchup against Zed. I detected a slight <laughs> note of sarcasm in his voice from that one because <laughs> that's not a lame matchup that he's going to want to actually end up playing. So, it's, it, as you said, the interest here is whether we see double lift on Vayne, what they actually do positioning wise for all of these well, players. Well, double lift is currently on Vayne and he's immediately locked it in. Well, that's several sad. <laughs> It basically means Archie is going to be playing Lucian, probably in a solo lane. One thing I noticed when these lineups were announced is generally how squishy all of the teams were, which is meaning it's probably going to be a pretty explosive, explosive game, much like the previous two Hexakill and Earth modes we saw. We also have Team Fire being very attack damage heavy, and they don't have a support like Zyra that can build a lot of AP and influence the game that way. So we'll have to see, maybe it will be an AP Ezreal or something. They do have those two AD carries that they can switch around. That being said, Lucian here on Team Ice, not the worst of AD carries if you have to go to a solo lane. He has a dash. Plus, on the side of Ice, they don't have a true jungler, right? So that means Cool is going to be jungling Lee Sin. He's formerly a mid laner of OMG. 
And you, you imagine that, you know, mechanically, that kind of champion is going to be fine for him to play. Whether his, you know, his, his role of the, as a mid laner and not as a jungler, he's going to be playing into that one. We're going to have to say, I mean, he's up against Diamond, who is one of the <laughs> legendary yeah. Lee Sin players and an all-time great in the jungle. It's not an easy matchup for him. Yeah, going up against Diamond on the Lee Sin is never an easy task. However, cool in the mid lane, he's one of those short-range assassin mid lane players. He was known for his Fizz, also playing Yasuo. So I think Lee Sin, he won't have too hard of a transition into that champion. So we are going to be uh, finding out who's going to get the edge in this one. Teams, of course, now sorted out who they're going to play from the champions that you guys chose. So head over to Twitter and tell us who you think is going to win the game. Use the hashtag IceWin or hashtag FireWin and be sure to send it to at LOL Esports for all that. And we'll, of course, be checking in a little bit later to see where your guys' votes lie. I'm going to ask you guys, though, where do your votes lie? I gotta say, the team with more people on position, this is actually an advantage for Team Ice, I feel like. They have everyone on their <laughs> comfortable champions. Mad Life Thresh, Double Lift Vayne, Frog and Anivia. Things are looking pretty good right there. Yeah, I'll, I'll just go opposite from you then, because we right. can, I can say <laughs> the same things. Bjergsen is on Zed. Very happy with that yeah. champion. Diamond on Lee Sin, we already talked about. So I'll go fire. Well, here we go. We're going to get into it. It's Ice versus Fire one more time in the Pick 10 game. The question is, how is this one all going to work out? Of course, yesterday, Ice bounced back after, let's be honest, a thrashing in day one when it came to the Earth Mode game to win in the Hexakill matchup. We'll see who gets the points here today. Yeah, I like how the intensity of these matches has definitely heated up. Uh, they're definitely taking the competition more seriously now, as you can see, an invade already from Team Ice. You could really tell, as soon as Double if fed in the first game and he got all that criticism, it was game time immediately after that one. And now it's really just game on because they both won that game and kind of embarrassed each other. Well, we see that Ice are already moving up through the fire jungle, up by that red buff there already. What are they going to be going for in this one? Diamond did spot a couple of guys in there. QTV as well with Ezreal was on the top side of the map. So staying safe. Actually, the Q from Cool landing there onto Bjergsen. Not going to dive in, though. No vision there for Ice beyond what they could see in the river in the middle. I like the SKT skin that Bjergsen's decided to wear in this <laughs> one. I really doubt that Froggen's going to be playing heads up against Bjergsen Zed, though. Yeah, speaking of Froggen with the Anivia, he has taken Teleport. So that may be a top lane Anivia, um, or he may be trying to use it as an escape to get away from Zed. Yeah, Joe was actually mentioning earlier backstage how if he's bringing Teleport on Anivia, he might actually try and teleport away from the Death Mark when Pjergsen comes in on him. Which will work once, and yeah. then, he's, you know, he's got his egg. Then not very got, often. Yeah. His teleport's not going to be up all that quick. Bjergsen's probably just going to say, okay, you win this this one single trade, then you get away from it, and you can call that winning yeah. even. The winning the trade <laughs> is using all your summoner spells in your passive. <laughs> not even dying. That's winning for Froggen, I do believe. Uh, but we do see that red buff starter. We're going to see Mad Life and Double Lift headed down into this bottom lane. Going to be two versus two against Wei Zhao and Shai. And we do get to see Froggen Bjer versus Bjergsen Whoa. here. He lands the sun. See, that's the hardest part of this matchup, is landing the slow stun from Anivia. He's got it there, and he also has yeah. plenty of consumables in his inventory here, starting pretty much all consumables except for that charm. He's going to need them too because he took a whole bunch of damage right off the bat in that early trade. Uh, long sword start from Bjergsen, so you can tell who's going to be going aggressive in that mid lane there. And down on the bottom already, Shy and ah. Wei Zhao putting down some good damage onto Mad Life and Double Lift. Double hooks, of course, in this bottom lane, and I think Shy's going to have a bit of a point to prove here against the <laughs> legend on Thresh himself, Mad Life. Uh, well, they both have started with those Duran shields, so they're looking to trade early. All, both of these guys in the bottom lane uh, are looking to fight, so it will be action-packed. I like how Shy played Blitzcrank in the Earth mode, and then he's just like, all right, I'm actually just going to be the Hookmaster here, even if he's on the same team of Mad Life. It doesn't surprise me at all to go with exactly the same item builds as well, because they should actually know what each other build on, Thresh at least. Oh, actually a play coming in. They're going to go aggressive here on towards Double if Shy. Not exactly super oh. in there, it's all landed. Exhaust put onto Wei Zhao. That may have just saved Double Lift's life. Now, right there, a lot of the damage from Team Ice was going into Shy, and all the damage was uh, from Fire was going into Double Lift, so he got low. Cool, though, gonna yeah. look to even it up. This is bad news. Cool coming in from the side. Shy gonna get pushed against the wall. This is surely first one. He's gonna go to Double Lift, and there is Cool hammering away on Wei 
Diamond's out. He's level three, but decides against the turret down. Meanwhile, up top, Diamond is going to for a gank of his own. Actually, he backs away now. Rushing away from the crowd there on their feet for this one. And this mid lane, we can see that Froggen doing some decent trade off, but look at his items. Those basically yeah. full inventory of consumables that he has. He doesn't want to get arrested oh. now, but he might oh. get him here. Oh, this is close. Is he going to go in for it? Not quite. Got the damage Ooh. there to finish off. And Bjergsen running risky, especially with Cool moving up. Froggen actually two points in Q and in E, so he's maxing his damage early on in that lane. Pre-6, he's done a pretty good job against Zed and will continue to. It's going to be post-6 when he starts having these issues. Meanwhile, that bottom lane matchup is a little bit crazy. Vayne is disadvantaged early against Lucian, but it didn't matter for Team Ice. And we saw last time Double Up got first blood. Uh-oh, top they're fighting. Going There's in. The gank. QTV, but here comes Diamond. Going to safeguard over on towards QTV, but... Oh, oh. he flashes back in! He gets the kill onto QTV. I think he might die from this one, though. Please. There is a push. Oh. Pull jumps around. Diamond gets the kill, but will he lose that blue one? He'll refresh over there for cool. I have to say, Cool is doing extremely well on his Lee Sin versus Diamond. Not only did he get the first blood for Double Lift, who went off last time he got kills in yeah. the game, but he also gets the return kill on the other Lee Sin. Looks like Cool is number one Lee Sin at All Star so far. Yeah, yesterday in the game he did exceedingly well. Nice substitute fill in for Team Ice right here. And Kobe, the prediction I had very early for Team Ice looked a little <laughs> bit better here, okay. even if you just picked Fire to go on the other side of me. Are we going to see Froggen and, and Bjergsen fight here once again? You have to wonder whether Bjergsen just biding his time here to get to level 6 and then going to go all in force. Oh, Froggen out with Shao here, taking a lot of damage. Once again, Double If and Mad Life not really losing much from that. Do see that both AD carries uh, have now got themselves not. I say both AD carries, we've of course got two Lucians, an Ezreal <laughs> and a Vayne in there as well. Yeah. Uh, but the bottom lane AD carries, let's say, we have Vayne, of course, double A picking up first blood with that vamp set. To, on the other side, only the long sword here for Wei Zhao, so not quite got the same sustain in there, and you can see he's having to burn through pots to stay healthy in that lane. And let's be completely honest, if Mad Life double lift do not win a 2v2 <laughs> lane against guys you don't lane together, they are going Something's to get shredded wrong. by yeah. social media right here. So that's the big advantage of Ice is that lane. Oh. Yeah, and it wasn't like uh, Wei Zhao got to choose his timing to go back. He was forced to go back because he was killed. That is rather true as well. Double if actually going decently low from this one. Still within good range though of their turret, but needs to be careful because Shy, whilst he's not your normal Thresh player, certainly can hit these hooks. There's no doubt about that. Absolutely strong mechanical skill there in the bottom lane. I have to point out the mid lane as well. Uh, never mind. Diamond's down here for the game. <laughs> this would be really dangerous, dangerous if Ice was going aggressive. But with the current health bars down there, I really don't expect them to do any type of aggressive move. I think Diamond's actually wasting his time down here. Cool is actually on the other side of the map, so there wouldn't be any opposition if they were to go in for this one, but they'd require a dive at this stage. Double lift and Mad Life both underneath their own turret. Wei Xiao actually just tanking up one hit. Diamond's still waiting here. It would be very dangerous to go for that dive because Double Lift and Mad Life still have their defensive summoner spells, the heal and the exhaust ready. Oh, there's a play coming. Oh. Double lift gets on deep. He's gonna Whoa. go down. The patience. We questioned whether it was gonna be worth it, and there's the answer. It was. It absolutely was, but that's because Double Lift decided to get a little bit aggressive right outside his turret, ate the hook from Shy, and it was absolutely fatal. Yeah, Shy answering back with some thresh play of his own here. Very well played, and Diamond patience play pays off. As you said, they can't afford to lose this lane. Everyone has been wanting to see Double Lift and Mad Life on Vayne and. Uh, the Thresh as well, and well, I think it'd also be quite hard to swallow for Mad Life if he hits less hooks in that lane than Shy does. Yeah, and speaking of the fan favorite picks, the mid lane is still continuing to be that farm up between Froggen and Bjergsen, but this would be where it starts to turn. Froggen has to itemize mana. He actually went for an early chalice, which means if Bjergsen gets on top of him, he's probably just dead. Yeah, I think this next Amp Tome will probably be turning into an arm guard because he needs some sort of defensive yep. capabilities against the Zed. Already level 7. This is where the kill pressure comes in. He still has Ignite as well. Froggen has been known to build absolutely whatever he wants, though, in these games. So we never know what that could be. He could be building a Ohm Wrecker. He just <laughs> okay. hasn't started yet. Well, we've seen it in Europe. <laughs> yeah. We're in Europe, so if you add two and two together, you get four, obviously, with that one. Uh, Bjergsen here is going to be getting the blue buff as he goes into mid lane. Froggen 
Started to move over as well. Cool wasn't quite ready for him, but now Frogan will be getting his hands on that blue buff. Question is, without the teleport, I mean, what does Frogan do if Bjergsen jumps on him? What can he do, really? We were talking about this earlier. He has only really one play, is to put the ultimate on top of him, hope to land the Q, and then E, and that might be enough damage. Double lift! Oh, the lantern disappeared! What? Double lift in the middle of nowhere, and Madeline finally oh! comes around this side! He hooks Shai from the corner as well, but double lift falls away! Wei Shao goes for him! Is he gonna finish him off? No, he's not! Madeline going low as well, but he will get back underneath his tower. That was super close to a disaster for Ice. Uncoordinated bottom lane here. Madlife and Doublelift, maybe a little miscommunication there, but Doublelift gets stuck inside the box. It almost looked amazing. It was like he ran all the <laughs> way around just to get the hook, but they just couldn't trade. Oh, they do it! What? Double goals, not the right time to be doing them right there, Joe. Well, yeah, no, <laughs> not, not even close to that, but there's all Oh, Lee Sin! Here comes Lee Sin, and that's a kill on Shai as well. Cool was there. They had a ward down, so they spotted Cool coming, but couldn't evacuate quick enough. I have to say, with all this action down bottom lane, the winners have really been uh, Wei Zhao and actually Cool coming down for multiple games. Yeah. And it's funny how the 80 carries that might actually be the farmed ones are the guys who got relegated up to top lane, QTV and Archie. They've been completely free to farm up there, and they might actually be the late game AD carries. So let's have a look at this one. Double lift's like, yep, I'm taking <laughs> golems. Oh, wait, no, I get hooked and Colin kills me. Yeah, so the thing about that is, even though Shai is a top lane player, Wei Zhao, he's very used to this. He knows they're going to go for double golems, and they find them at the double golems. But Cool comes in right as they're trying to escape from the kill that they are secured. Oh, Archie. Oh, there's a lantern. And the hook as well onto QTV. Box goes down. One to oh, oh, the QTV. And there is the Kali coming through. Mad left now going to try and chase down Diamond. Don't know if he's quite got the damage to actually pick up a kill, but what a turnaround. Mad life with the surprise appearance in top lane. I'd be a little bit worried about infidelity if I was double lift right now <laughs> because he just had success <laughs> with the other AD carry when he went to his lane. Well, this is classic Mad Life, right? He's got the mobility boots early, he's going up to Rome, and he gets a kill! Uh, Another Rome! Yeah, this might not be the last one either, as Cool actually gonna go in, oh. kicks off Bjergsen to the side! Mad Life now moving around, Froggen trying to get involved on this one. Bjergsen is gonna go down, it's Cool that picks up that one. And we have the question, how good of a jungler is Cool on Lee Sin? He's 3-0, I think he's kind of answered that already. He is doing very strong. You can see it in the item lead, too. He's putting a lot of this money into vision control so that he can keep Diamond from making plays because Diamond has been answering. He's been on the other side of the map. He got his bottom lane uh, caught up down there, and now Wei Xiao is actually going to be a really big force. Oh, Diamond gets walled in there, and Cole comes around again and says, thank you very much. Oh, that's there another you go. one for me. He's out of turret range, doesn't take any damage, and that's free damage onto the turret on top of it. Cool has really been the beneficiary of some really nice plays by the rest of the team as well there. The fact that Froggen has survived the lane this well, and that wall to help him secure a kill, Cool has a lot of gold that he now has to make use of. Turret going down there in the bottom lane. Measure out will finish that one off. That leaves fire in front here uh, in terms of turrets, but because of that kill difference, actually a couple of thousand gold and behind. And Cool is again heading down bottom. He wants to get something going for Mad Life and double lift because they are straight up losing this lane now. Well, the big thing is Mad Life spent so much time helping the rest of the team, which was honestly worth it, that has just set double lift a little bit behind. Maybe he's not going to be the carry this game unless he does something a little bit spectacular. Oh, QTV going aggressive here on towards Archie, who got the better of him last time, of course. If you look at the items between those two, both uh, got themselves phage. The Sheen is there for Archie, and a vamp scepter for QTV. So going to have that sustain in this top lane, but it doesn't matter if Archie's doing that much damage to him over and over. Archie has looked so good, and I like the point about Mad Life actually dumping his AD carry that just got killed and going up yeah. top lane, <laughs> because now they have a Lucian that can actually stand up to Fire's Lucian. And the question is, if he gets a Blade of the Rune King, could he survive Zed? Because he's coming up top lane, fights on both sides of the map. I'll come to Cole, but he will just get away from that one. But look at this, okay, we see I'll... Bjergsen coming back in. There is Archie, he's throwing oh! down the Colin. He walks him back in there, QTV's gonna die. Archie's dead as well as the death mark pops. Bjergsen gets his first kill of the game. So even though Archie has died two times up there when people come to Rome, he keeps on killing Ezreal before he dies. Now to Cole again, there's a flash, the flag, and then the hook from Mad Life. Frogan actually picks that one up in the end, and they get the tower. Mad Life was ripping him back into the stun from Anivia just to secure that kill. Awesome synergy from guys you pretty much never played together. Yeah, beautiful plays, and they are making a lot of these plays on Diamond, really picking on him.
After one day, one day we'll actually see a real team ice. This would be a scary lineup to actually get together, I think, in pretty much any region. So far, going well for them. 9-4 open kills. They've just got a second turret of the game here. And actually, a healthy gold league. 3,000 gold it is that they've got on that. Double lift is now starting to farm back a little bit into this one. I mean, we talked, we kind of gave the hype in this match to Mad Life and Double Lift for obvious reasons, but Wei Zhao is a phenomenal, phenomenal AD carry player, and we've seen that already here. Yeah, the thing is, we've been talking so much about wave control of minions in the Invitational games. It's very true in this game as well, because this is the most normal of the challenge games. Even though Double Lift's turret went down because Mad Life went roaming, he now has the creep wave in a more safe spot, and he's gotten plenty of minion farm deep in his own territory. And it's also not like when this game turns into a more standard team fight phase, they're not going to know what to do. These are the most popular champions, pretty much. And they're running double AD, which is a little bit strange now, but was very common at many points during Season 3. This may be a sign of a little bit of lack of vision now from Ice's side. On the bottom side of the map, the Dragon is going to be taken away basically for free by fire. There is the whoa, ultimate coming whoa. through. QTV going a little bit too aggressive on this one. He's hooked in and finished off in the end. Cool will be able to live steal back up. A catch a little bit too deep there was QTV. Yeah. Frog and chance. QTV trying to make a play by himself. He almost got the kill, but it was going to be a death for him no matter what. He was surrounded. And look at the vision. The teams have basically, basically traded vision. One side of the map for Ice here on the top red, and for the bottom side for Fire. They've continually been trading the red buffs. However, Fire also came out of that with the Dragons. So remember the global gold, because they definitely need that to get back in this game 10-4 to 4 currently. Damage on to Shy there. That's where it's almost going down, but Shy's presence was enough to actually save them. Actually, interesting, just want to talk about the... Oh, wait, let's forget that, because Diamond's coming in here on towards Double Lift. He's going to knock him there against the wall. Where's the rest of the damage? Not quite following through. Wei Zhao gets in position, throws in the Colin, Blade of the Ruined King. Oh, there's back out the Ice Bird is coming down. Froggen is there. Cool is there. The King oh. is available for him, but they don't really need it. There's one kill, and the wall will stop Diamond from running away so quickly. Bjergsen could come down to help. Or he could just let Diamond die, which looks like the more likely scenario. That was a little bit off. The Q's landed, though, and there is the kill. Cool now, Godlike. 7 0 1 on Lee Sin, but once again, a lot of that chase was just done by Frog and making it so that Diamond couldn't jump away where he actually wanted to. This is just Team Ice dominating right now. I have to say, we need to give the fans more credit. There's a reason they voted Frog in Anivia. <laughs> Even though it looked like a bad matchup versus Yed, he played it safe oh! and now he's making a play. Oh, wow, the kick on towards Bjergsen. He's going to put his death mark on to cool. Well, the rest of the team combined. Double in picking up the kill. Shai's in all kinds of trouble now as well. Wei Zhao has come in there. Frog he's teleported out of there. Has his egg. Is he going to get is away? <laughs> there is the TP to get away. That's the tactic we were expecting earlier on. Diamond now coming over. Archie in trouble. He will surely fall. Yes, he got over the wall, but Wei Zhao's auto attack already going in his direction. Big fight. The funny thing is, Frog and teleported about three feet away, but he still managed to get over the wall. It was his delayed flash, but he got his egg form and he got out with full health. So, strategy successful, I suppose? As I said, he used his summoners and he used his passive, but he basically won there. That's how he goes, and he flashes away. So now he really doesn't have anything left. Yeah, there's his second flash, and now he's under turret. His blue buff ran out, but he still has a good mana pool, so he could try and help with the wave clear here. He could wall them in as well, so <laughs> they get a more protected environment. Mad Life actually tried the hook there onto Shy. Cool's a scary one, though. If you look at him, 7-0-2 already. Yeah, Cool is definitely doing very well, but man, did we just see in that last wave clear from Froggen how insane Anivia's mana costs are. Again, Cool behind enemy lines, gets the kick in. And this was just such a big cluster back here. Ice just five-man turret down, showing you how far ahead they are. When they got trapped in between the turret a little bit, Froggen said, all right, I'm, I'm out of here with that. And it went through the egg, oh. but Shy caught again. Shy is dead. Froggen picking that one up. He's got his Zonyas now as well, which is another more viable anti-Z strategy than just TPing out when he actually comes on to you. So he'll be feeling a little bit more safe. There's a nice tweet as well. This also day is going to be big, and it is indeed. We've got two semi-finals coming up after this one, but this has been a cracking game so far.
Yeah, I'm interested to see. Uh, there's pings going down on the bottom turret here. I think Monty would be proud of Team Ice because they're looking to rotate down there after the kill, but Medlov gets caught. Oh, is he going to go down? Diamond going up there. Here comes the exhaust. It's a lot of damage from Archie. Well, the death mark comes in. Archie's going to die before the death mark can even come down. QTV that gets a double. He was a little bit slow to start QTV, but you see yeah. the damage he's putting out now with the Trinity Force. Pretty important getting those two kills right there because, as you said, he was way behind. And that was a little bit of Archie sticking around to try and protect Mad Life. He actually stayed in to try and block Ezreal Qs, but really, it was just a waiting inevitable doom, and he ended up getting himself killed too. Oh, Q landing there on towards Zed. No one following on, though. Double if he needs to get back with the rest of his team. Shai's trying to come around the side from this one. He's Quite far, far, but far, wait a minute, let me try that one again. Far <laughs> forward, uh, but you know, boost some mobility, both copying basically what uh, Mad Life had, and that's all you really need to do. If you play fresh yeah. against Mad Life, just copy his build <laughs> all day long, which actually he didn't do since Mad Life went a bit more gold generation. Real low on the other here. side, there is Lee Sin going through again. Cool, may have gone a bit deep with that one though. Shy actually gets the hook. Bjergsen, is he gonna dive in onto him? Is he gonna commit to it? He's got no death mark. And now right Mad Life in. comes in. That was not the strongest of boxers, but they can't shy out of position. He will go down, and they hook into Wade now as well. He'll be followed through one, trying to dash oh. away, but he's gonna get finished. What a play there from Ice. That was actually four versus four, but they had superior vision inside the jungle, and they were able to make plays over the walls. Mad Life actually just walked straight into the whole team to put his box down. This is why you can watch Mad Life play Thresh all day, even though the box didn't immediately hit someone. Oh dear, that too. Teleport out. Oh wait, it's not Froggen. Bjergsen is gonna get that one. Actually, Froggen is there on the backside. QTV takes a big blast. Froggen is on a killing spree. 3-0-8 now on the Anivia. And he has also oh! completed his Anyas. Wow. Good reactions there. Oh, Actually, he's got the Q back. Will Diamond it. go in? Oh, he gets away. Oh, through there from Cool. Diamond might be able to have him still. Oh, Froggen comes around the side. Credit to Diamond for actually finishing off, though. More importantly, though, Froggen finally got a blue buff out of that. The Lee Sins have been smiting it away, and the fact that Froggen got in there is more important than the shutdown that Diamond got for killing Cool. Push back here in the mid lane for Fire. Things slowed down a little bit for them in terms of success. You know how the kills that they've been having. Let's have another look at that one. Such great All right. reactions. So that was Diamond. one Q that lands, two Qs that land. Diamond doesn't want to take it in because he knows Froggen's there to back him up. But this is the third one that lands. Coop. Cool has the confidence because he knows Froggen will come there, but as you said, Diamond gets the first KO and Froggen comes to even it up. Getting this Dragon as well for Team Fire is actually very important. They're behind in both levels and experience, and go obviously experience is levels, but and gold. <laughs> so they get bonuses from the Dragon since they're behind in XP. It's really important to sneak Dragons when they're behind 20 minutes in. And Vision. Uh, that's why they have to sneak the Dragon. They have zero Vision on Team Ice's side because they're constantly on the defensive now. And Team Ice are doing a good job of actually continuing that ward coverage. Looking for some more points here. Fire, of course, winning the Earth game on day one. If we didn't have Zed in there, Bjergsen probably would have gone with the Ezreal again. I mean, he picked up about 25 kills, I think, in that Earth game on day one. But so far, yesterday, and of course, this game up until now, 22 minutes in, has all been about Ice. And it's going to continue that way by the looks of it. They're stacking up here for a go on that inner turret in the bottom lane. Yeah, and this is Bjergsen in the side lane trying to get some farm. There's no threat on ice right there, so it's basically an uncontestable turret. Ooh, Hulk flying through, but QTV got the mobility to avoid that. All right, Team Ice will be shoving in two inhibitor turrets now. Not much up left on the map for them to take, so it's very hard for them to draw <laughs> Team Fire out of the base. Listen, Cool is showing off a little bit on Lee Sin. He wasn't even supposed to be a... He's not a jungler. He was surprised that he was playing in this one and he is doing an amazing job right Right, now. he is basically the all-star substitute. For OMG, exactly. After feeling this kind of performance, he probably should have been in there right from the very start rather yeah. than the substitute uh -oh. role. Oh, this is bad news for Shy. Well, it would be if Cool is actually wanting to fight him. He seems to be just doing a dance around. The hook does come in, lanterns down, and Cool says, see you later. Still got to keep vision on that red, though. They're slowly trying to invade this. To see how many people on fire are actually there, it's because the rest of their team this is just a Lee Sin and Thresh. They can jump around a bunch, but they don't do much damage. Yeah, it's pretty dangerous, though, because there's a lot of extra firepower here for Team Fire. Cool. Keeping it ice cold, though, just to follow up from. Oh, <laughs> yeah, might as well. Incredible job. We have to, we have to <laughs> throw those in. <laughs>
They back away in the end. No relaxation. Oh, Whoa. double lift. What are you doing? You are miles out of position. Uses a heel. Is he going to go down? Whoa. Oh, that's some great mechanics, as we've come to expect from the man himself. And now Archie getting involved. He's going to fall low and get finished off as well. This could be a bit of a whitewash for a fire. There is just not enough people right here for ice. They're in trouble, but there's Froggen. Oh, cool. He's trying here. He's doing his best and he's getting the results from it as well. Froggen stuns up another one. Diamond now slow from the ulti. The wall comes in. He's slowly but surely going down. It's a double kill for Froggen. Froggen and Cool are really carrying this team. Cool already with nine kills on that Lee Sin. Even though Team Ice collapsed a little slowly, now Froggen look for more. He's going very deep from this. That's one. Oh, he lands a stun. Predicted flash from QTV, who's trying to pick off Cool. He doesn't, though. Froggen is godlike. Gets his seventh kill of the game. And the seventh stack on his Soul Stealer, Joe. He's waiting oh, for that. Let's take another that. look at this fight. Kobe, take us through it. Did you see Bjergsen's great use of the shadow right there? Using his ultimate, didn't get condemned into the wall, avoided the stun, and in the end, double lift does go down, no matter how much dancing he does. Everybody came to save him, though. And three members of Team Ice go down. But here come the heavy hitters. Yeah. One thing, though, is Fire used so many cooldowns. When Froggen arrived, he meant business. The first off didn't quite land for him, but just watch the efficiency of his Q stuns. Those are so slow moving, but Froggen always finds a way to get these people in. Wall to shut down Diamond. And then he continued on and actually landed a post Arcane Shift Ezreal with the stun. <laughs> That was the most impressive part. There's a reason why you guys at home have picked Froggens and Nivea, right? We don't get to see it all that often, but when we do, always a little bit special here. And today seems like no difference to that one as Double Lift again, maybe getting caught out. Or will it be Bjergsen getting caught out? Cole comes in from the side. Double Lift gonna join in. Death Mark goes down. Double Lift doesn't really care about that one. Bjergsen's trying to get away. Oh the God. TP from Froggen. He gets kicked away, but Diamond's not got the damage here to finish him off. Froggen puts down his ulti, gets himself another double. And that that teleport was all about getting away from Bjergsen. He's turning around and using to kill him. That was one of the most beautiful alley-oops I have ever <laughs> seen right there, from Cool to Froggen. It's almost like they were reading each other's minds. They don't have to be able to communicate with English. I mean, the fact that Froggen had to pick into a bad matchup here because of the fans in a game that is the best players in the world from their regions, pretty much. 9-0-9 with 11 Soul Stealer stacks on Nivea. Absolutely insane. I hope this means that Froggen would be a little less apprehensive about picking a Nivea in the future. Yeah. Into bad matchups. Uh, we'll see about that. But here's that one again. Yeah, this one was just Bjergsen trying to do a little too much. It was a really quick kick over the wall. They just alley-ooped him over the wall into a teleport, as Kobe was saying. And of course, at that, that point, Ice just overwhelmed them. Easy kills all around. Diamond also got a little stuck in the wall there trying to queue over to uh, Froggen. And Cool was able there to sandwich him. What great team play from this team ice here. We talked about in the beginning of these games where Diamond was the one who was really focused, getting everyone to play on the same speed. But really, team ice looks so coordinated now. And we do have to mention that Froggen's on about 3,000 health now to make sure he doesn't die with his Soul Stealer up. Warmaw is <laughs> completed with another giant spell on the way. Now he's building what he wants, like he always does when he's ahead on a Nivea. Well, Jad, he's got to protect those stacks and pages Absolutely. in his book. To be fair, it's not the first time that we've seen Froggen build a Warmog on the Nivea, so... You know, as you said, he's feeling confident here, obviously, at 9-0-9. As Shai just hooks onto the Baron to give Mad Life a bit of damage back. Actually, Double Lift's been pretty quiet this game. Everyone's wanted to see him on Vayne. He's ramping up, though, and that's the dangerous thing once he does get there. Yeah, he would be able to split push, but uh, we'll have to see if Bjergsen actually decides to go for him again, because last time we saw, Bjergsen was able to use uh, his ulti to dodge Condemns, and... Doublet wasn't the one to go down in that matchup. The thing is, Doublet has his items. He's at the three big yeah. main items that you'd actually want to see him in dueling. Just as much as Bjergsen, a lot of the global gold that his team's been able to give him has put him about 1,500 ahead of Wei Xiao. And generally, people do like to take Vayne into Zed split pushing. Yep. Vayne is one of the champions that you will oh, like. Oh, no. I'll play him with. There's some more stack. Dead. Dead, dead, dead. Frog and legendary. Tenth kill of the game for him there, along with nine assists as well. I saw actually moving over towards Baron. Diamond is waiting at the side. He's just put a ward in there as well, but Madlife is basically just scaring him off from this one. Here is the start. QTV 
could have a go at trying to steal from the backside. Doesn't have his true shot barrage up just yet, though. Frogon is basically tanking stuff up. Look at the base, though. The super minions have actually taken down one Nexus turret. They need to go back and sort this one out. No one right now is going back. They've come away from the Baron. They're going to try and stop them getting back into the base. That second Nexus turret is going to be going down quickly. They had to send Thresh back. I don't even know if he can clear it. Cool goes in. Oh, Cool going a little bit too far there, but here comes Archie from the side. Guess what? QTV now going to be slowed up from Frogan's ultimate, and there is the kill. Frogan picks it up. 11 0 10. Nexus to it went down. They're on to the <laughs> Nexus itself. Shy can't deal with them. He's trying his best, though, playing back the minions. Wei Xiao finally returns to home, though, and he's able to defend the Nexus here. Only one super minion left. You know what's going to happen? Frogan's going to TP in and finish the game. Ooh. Oh, man. Well, yeah, Divya backdoor. He's because got... his Sunfire Cape uh, is going to help him out <laughs> in that one as well. It'll help him clear the minions. He's got 40 seconds on that teleport. He's up to, as well, 16 stacks on the Soul Stealer. He's almost completed the book here. Getting maximum respect from the fans here in Paris as well. And look at him, he's edged up towards that enemy jungle where they've got full ward control and double lift says, you know what guys, let's do the Baron. I'm not sure that Fire can really get anywhere near this one and when, if, that looks like it'll probably only be Diamond who's stepping forward, already used a ward there is uh, to get some vision back, but Baron's already gone down. This has gotten a little bit out of hand. <laughs> I think it's safe to say. Oh, really? That Sunfire K Maybe a little. Uh, <laughs> Soul Stealer and if he is What not you out, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Well, at least Froggen is a good chance of hitting 20 stacks here, which will be an all star game first. Whoa, he's uh, deep. Yeah, Ways Out is going to get taken low. The Cool oh. will finish off here from Archie. Now they're going for QTV. They're going to get him as well. Cool picks up that one. Diamond actually knocking everyone around, but Bjergsen's going to fall. Diamond's going to go down, and he's now all on Mad Life. He couldn't defend against the Super Minions earlier, so he's not going to manage anymore. Double kill comes in. Lucky for them, the Inim just respawned, so they can't go into the Nexus, but this should be game. Hey, they managed to get the ace right there. Froggen got enough assist to hit 20 stacks. His soul war is complete. Everything is good for Team Ice. Nice victory. Big, big win for Team Ice and a big confidence boost as well. Froggen playing the Anivia. He said that he was looking forward to playing that into the Z. Well, apparently he wasn't actually being sarcastic like we thought he was. He actually was looking forward to it. He didn't die a single time in that game. And we did get to see the teleporting egg. That was one of the best yes. parts. He didn't really need it. It wasn't the uh, the Zed ulti on top of him, but it worked out well. Top CS in the game, top kills in the game, and still 14 assists without dying. Frog and captain of the team, and easily the MVP of this game for Big Ten. And I can put an argument forward as well that Cool in that one. We have the question of how good is he going to be in the jungle. He was phenomenal. He was spectacular. He built extremely tanky as well. He saw Froggen's Warmogs and decided that was a good idea for him. And in the end, he kept on making plays. He was so tanky, he could get into the back line. He could be that utility Lee Sin. And this kind of just opens up for the games tomorrow with the 1v1 and the 2v2 because that's the final one, I believe, is going to be Froggen Wei against Xiao. Wei Xiao. So Froggen carried them in this for the two points, and that final one that's going to be worth three points might actually end up telling it. I mean, if he's going to play 1v1, maybe the Teleport Anivia wouldn't <laughs> be a bad choice <laughs> going into that one versus one. With Medjai's. Why yeah. not? Well, I mean, you only need one kill, so your stacks aren't really going to get there, but I mean, you can buy it just for bonus points, basically. Style points. Style points. All stylish stuff. Good win there for Ice. Quite a, a fairly one-sided game. I mean, it started yeah. off quite back and forth, but they really got rolling. Let's be completely fair, 35 kills to 14. Early on in the game, it did look a little bit dire. I mean, knowing the lane matchups with Bjergsen, knowing that Diamond is going to be flying around on Lee Sin, and seeing the Lucian versus uh, Vayne matchup in the bottom lane aren't actually favorable matchups for Team yeah. Ice. They just had to outplay them through and through. And you have to give credit, while we're talking about that bottom lane, Shai and Wei Zhao actually looked incredibly good. With the help of Cool, we also yeah. have to say, but they were definitely not embarrassed by Double Lift and Mad Life.
Yeah, they started it out really well, getting that lead and, you know, forcing Cool to come down because Shy was the one who had taken most of the damage and he could just play further back at that point. If Cool hadn't come down to zone out Wei Xiao, they would have not been able to get that kill. And it's not often, I think, that you look at a game where Diamond is on Lee Sin against the mid laner that's jungling. Well, that really <laughs> never happens, but I didn't expect Diamond to be as quiet as he was yeah. in this game. It actually seemed like he was trying to catch up to Cool on a lot of those ganks. He was the second one to the party and picking up a few cleanup kills. Interesting stuff. And we'll see if Ice can continue this trend of picking up games because tomorrow we come down to the 1v1s. The 2v2s, I think that a lot of people are really, really looking forward to. That, of course, all comes tomorrow. We've got some, a small matter, two small matters, in fact, of best of three semifinals here in yeah. Paris. But first of all, we're going to go over to Quickshot and our analysts to break down that last game. Thank you very much, Joe. And what an incredible performance from Team Ice. They managed to bounce back, losing the first game. Bjergsen was able to, <laughs> <laughs> to carry them through ultra-rapid fire mode, but Bjergsen... Next to non-existent on that Zed, he was in a lane matchup against Froggen's Anivia. Got a fully stacked mage, as Kobe said it himself. He's looking to complete the book. He wrote the book. At the end of the game, tier one boots. He had a Sunfire cape, a Warmogs, 20 stacks of Magi's now. As the only member of the old CLG run that's roster that's undefeated on Anivia, mm -hmm. why don't you give me some insight into Froggen's Anivia, Crepo? See, I used to play a lot of Anivia, and then I thought I knew the champion. But then there's some stuff Froggen does that... Uh, it really shows how much he masters that champion. Um, I just I just wrote them down in the list, so I'm just gonna go over them real quick. First of all, there's the what he calls a telek port, where he actually ma manages to teleport away in his egg out of like these tricky situations. Then uh, when his spell usage, most people would use the stun, uh, the Q, proc it, wait until they see that it actually hits, and then uses E. No, Frogan is so confident that he's gonna hit it. He sends out his Q while it is flying. He will follow up with his E, and they will impact at roughly the same time for like a ginormous amount of damage. Then in this matchup, he put three points into Q when he had two points in, into E. So at level five, he had three points into Q. Didn't do anything in the wall, so he's going for that wave clear. Just like these little things that he changes in every matchup, it just shows how smart he is. So matchups against Kasten, for example, he would run 15 AD just to harass him out of lane. And then when it comes to his build, yeah, it looks trolly, but that's after he succeeds because he... Started with the Chalice for Mana Region. He doesn't up for the tier anymore because he wants to build it eventually into an Athens for more CDR. Then he gets the Zonias because he needs that against his head. And once these items are complete and he's in full Froggen mode, <laughs> then there's the variation. <laughs> I think the Warmux was a, a tribute to what his old tier Magi yeah. Warmux build. He should have probably gone random instead, but who am I to disagree with the king? <laughs> and then, yeah, the fact that he can get 20 stacks on his... Um, on his mage, I just shows how good he is. And then the last point, and then I'm done ranting about Anivia, <laughs> is when he was chasing Lee Sin, he would place his wall, but he wouldn't fully block off uh, the path. He wouldn't completely block off the Lee Sin to prevent him from dashing over and going away. So he he would do like a half wall block, forcing the Lee Sin to change his path enough for the team to catch up and kill him. But in case the Lee Sin had flash or dash over the wall, Froggen still had a way to walk through and didn't have to burn his flash. So there's all these like tiny things that just show how much he masters his champion. It's amazing to see. It's sickening because <laughs> I'll never ever understand a champion <laughs> at that level. Yeah, honestly, I, I really enjoy the fact that as soon as Team Ice got cool, there's kind of a set bonus going on and they just got a whole lot better. So it just seems like everything's coming into place for these guys. Yeah, he was a really good lease in. Completely yeah. agree. Now, uh, just before we talk about Cooler's highlight, Mad Life in the early game, I felt like both of those players were moving around the map significantly. Mad Life on Thresh landing a ridiculous number of hooks. His flays were good. Some of the plays, not necessarily the most flashy, but he was always at the right place at the right time. I really felt like he roamed extensively and helped Ice out in that early game because Doublelift simply wasn't helping his team in the late game. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's true in a lot of these Korean supports. It's uh, Obviously, there's some dif differentiation between builds, but it's pretty common in Korea to go boots and mobility even still after the changes to the items. Uh, of course, you can get it a little bit sooner now and then try and make plays around the map, try and get some deep boards and try and make plays on the mid lane. You don't usually see them going top lane. That was uh, he was that was a bit different. <laughs> he, he was, yeah. It was an eighty carry. He forgot. He's like, oh, eighty carries top okay. lane. Yeah, but I thought it was the lane swap. And the one bottom lane was pretty useless. So <laughs> yeah. I had to go up there, strip a set. But for Mad Life, I wish I'd written down some notes as well on him. But it's it would just say Mad Life is a god, and he always knows where to be in the right time. And with mobility boots, Korean supports, <laughs> gotta give him that. Talk about cool for a quick moment. Uh, substituting in for Team Ice because, of course, uh, uh, Tame had to step away uh, due to some family issues. And, of course, 
he really showed up. 10, 2, and 16 on Lee Sin. Not traditionally a jungler, but his ganks were good. His his presence was good. He he was backing everybody up he needed to. I think this will be just for him as a player, a big confidence booster as well. He had, uh, you know, he's been out of the competitive scene, taking a break for a while now. And uh, in his last match in the LPL, he didn't perform up to his old standards, but he, man, he looked good. His mechanics were really on point tonight. Yeah, yeah you, you got to consider this is the sub for OMG, a team we're going to be seeing later on, right? Like his replacement, Xiang, is, is ridiculously good. And uh, yeah, he was always in the right place at the right time. I kind of like the fact that he added a Warmogs and then uh, got a uh, chain vest as well. Like he, I feel like he was starting to mirror Froggen's build towards the end of the game. <laughs> I don't know if that was necessarily the case, but... Because you know. it was so successful. It was. So we do actually have a replay of one of those that tell egg ports. Let's pull the fight up onto your screens. I think, Freak, uh, you wanted to talk us through this one and, uh, you know, the specifics. Uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get the replay started here. This is uh, 11 and a half minutes in, so... Uh, it like which is point uh, double lift. Uh, getting caught, I believe. Oh, yeah, just well, he's killing double golems. Yeah. As a true AD carry, he's getting farm, which is very important for an AD carry here. I believe we were trying to show double lift getting caught, but the scene was so brutal and so gruesome for uh, Monte Cristo that we had to actually show that just double lift, in fact, can successfully do the golems. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that was just a, a, the, it was well played. Yeah. yeah. Well Congratulations. Played. Double lift was the PVE king of this match. <laughs> so, give him a round of applause. so let's take a step back very quickly. This does put Team Ice now on four points to the two points of Team Fire. Both of the game modes that we've seen them playing a little more standard. Team Ice has, I'm going to call it out right, they've frankly stomped Team Fire. Does this mean Team Fire are panicking? I mean, you know, Monty, what do you think of the rotations in these impromptu <laughs> squads? Oh, uh, they've been great. And uh, Team Ice, uh, we've talked a little bit about it. We've seen the players talk about it. They didn't really gel that first day. They didn't really practice. And Fire was tryharding. But ever since then, they, they really uh, seem to have made Ice keen for some revenge, so... However, there is still seven points left to be claimed in tomorrow's 1v1s, 2v2s, and of course we have the super 1v1 challenge that the fans voted for between Frog and Wei Xiao, so nothing is 100% set, set in stone yet. However, if Madlife and Doublelift loses tomorrow in the 2v2 to Bjergsen and Diamond, it could be pretty embarrassing. It could be indeed. It will be embarrassing. It will be, yeah. we're going to be blaming you the whole time. Yeah, why, why are you here? Hey, why are you not I, coaching Doublelift? Yeah, I can't <laughs> coach, man. I've been here the entire time. That, don't, don't make excuses. Don't make excuses. Priorities, man. Anyways, guys, we do have to take a very quick three and a half minute breather. But after the break, the games continue with our first best of three semifinal between Cloud9 and OMG. You can see they are gearing up they are getting themselves ready. All-Stars 2014 continues right after this.